It happened again. That sickening whump sound and a dead bird outside the window. Crash helmets for birds would be one remedy to deadly bird window strikes, but a highly effective solution that's more practical, inexpensive, and an easy DIY project can prevent these tragic collisions. And today, I'm going to show you how. This is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. Sometimes when a bird flies into a window, it gets stunned and it might be able to fly away and maybe even survive. Most often though, they're flying really fast when they hit and severe injury or even this is the result. It happens more often than you might realize since you might not always be nearby to hear it. And before you find an injured or dead bird outside, a cat, a hawk, or a scavenger has probably already taken the body away. In North America, more birds are killed flying into glass windows than any other cause of mortality, including cats, wind turbines, and toxins. It's a sad, all too common occurrence, but it doesn't need to be this way. This simple solution greatly reduces or even eliminates bird window strikes, and it's a fast, easy, inexpensive DIY project. I'm doing seven windows for my house for $64, and a few hours of work over two days time. As an added bonus, these look great and they don't interfere with your view out the windows. Birds collide with windows for a number of reasons. Sometimes they see through to another window and think it's an open passage. Another huge reason is that in certain light, almost any window can effectively become a mirror, reflecting a mirage of open sky, trees, and safety. And sometimes birds are being pursued by predators, especially occipiter hawks, and are paying attention to staying alive and don't see the window until it's too late. Using inexpensive paracord, these simple but brilliant bird savers work because the cords hanging in front of the window and swaying in the breeze break up the reflections and make the window appear to be unflyable. This bird saver system was invented in the 80s by the Ecopian family of engineers and naturalists. This solution has been scientifically validated through peer-reviewed experiments to be 90 to 100% effective in preventing bird collisions with residential and commercial windows. These Ecopian bird savers are also quite aesthetically pleasing and were given the name Zen Wind Curtains because of the calming effect that the gentle swaying has on people. They make a great DIY project to do with the kids or the grandkids. However, for those that can't or don't want to make their own, but still want to prevent these dreadful bird collisions, the birdsavers.com website offers custom bird savers for purchase. The Ecopian family are so passionate about saving birds that they go into great detail about how to DIY these window treatments on their birdsavers.com website and encourage everyone to use them, whether purchased or homemade. They just want to prevent needless bird deaths. There's a wealth of information and a great FAQ section on the website. My version is based on the instructions generously provided on the birdsavers.com website, but with a twist or two. The first is that mine are made with metal channels instead of vinyl for a clean and long-lasting installation. In Colorado, plastics don't last very long outside due to the abundant sunshine and intense UV exposure. I've had plastic items become brittle and disintegrate in one or two seasons in some cases. I also decided to make these for seven of my windows, so I made a simple jig for drilling the nearly 100 holes I needed for my situation. If you're only making one or two bird savers, the jig might not be needed. So let's get started making one of these and help our flying friends stay safe. The materials you'll need are nylon 550 paracord, half inch metal J channel, also referred to as J trim or J bead, spray paint to match the window trim, a drill or drill press, and a bit. I used a bit a little larger than the cord, so it's easy to slip the cord into the holes, but not so large that the knot will pull through. Scrap half inch wood, a lighter, metal snips, sharp scissors, and a speed square. The first step is to measure the window. I measured the width and height of the window glass to determine the length of the cords and how many cords were needed to achieve the optimal spacing of between three and a half 
and four and a quarter inches. I chose four inch spacing for mine. For this window, the glass is 56 and a half inches wide. At four inch spacing, I needed 13 cords. For length, the cords don't need to go to the very bottom of the glass, so some people stop short of the frame and some extend past it. It's a matter of preference, but I like the look of a small gap at the bottom. My window glass is 34 and a half inches tall, so I made my cords 34 and a half inches and added one inch to the length of each cord to account for the single knot at the top. Since paracord shrinks with moisture and heat, I pre-shrunk mine in hot water so my cords won't shrink out in the weather. The pre-shrinking will also loosen the kinks if your cord didn't come on a big spool like mine. With all the measurements for the cord taken, I added 10% to the total length needed to account for the shrinkage of the paracord. Paracord can shrink between 2 to over 12%. The cord I used shrank 4%. I needed 356 feet to do all my windows, so I laid out one of the 10-foot lengths of J-channel to measure with. For long lengths of cord, this is much easier than trying to measure with a tape measure. I placed the cord in a bucket with the end tied to the bucket handle so I could find it again later after its relaxing soak. Using the hottest water I could get from the tap, I filled the bucket to completely cover the cord and I let it sit a few hours in the water. I then wrapped the wet cord around another bucket and let it dry. If you can spread the cord out over the bucket instead of bunching it all up like I did, it'll dry faster. I let mine dry overnight. While all this soaking and drying was going on, I cut, drilled, and painted the J-channel. For the length of the J-channel for this window, I decided to use the width of the upper horizontal part of the window frame since I think it looks nice. Cutting is easy to do with the metal snips, also known as aviation snips. So just start by cutting one of the marks down one of the sides. We'll cut the other one. Okay, and we're not going to try to cut the third side. All we're going to do is once that's cut, we'll bend this back and forth until it snaps off. And there we are. I had 97 holes to drill, so I made a simple jig out of scrap wood. The J-channel fit a bit too tightly over the rough half-inch wood I was using, so I sanded a taper at the top of the wood. I screwed this half-inch piece to a scrap of 2x4 so I could clamp it down, making it steady for drilling. I clamped this jig to my drill press table, drilled a shallow hole, and then measured out 4 inches, where I screwed in a screw with a domed head with a diameter that would barely fit into the holes on the J-channel. This arrangement allowed me to drill precisely spaced holes without having to mark each hole. I left four and a quarter inch lengths on the ends of my channel, so it lined up with the window frames, so I made a mark on the jig for drilling the holes on each end. If you don't have a drill press, you could accomplish the same thing with a handheld drill, though you might want to create a dimple in the J-channel with an automatic center punch or a dull nail. This will keep the bit from skating around on the metal. You'll still want a scrap of half-inch material to help keep the J-channel from moving around while you drill. Next, I painted the channels. I hung them with a stiff wire and sprayed a couple of coats, paying more attention to the front than the back. The steel is galvanized, so I wasn't worried about corrosion where the coat wasn't as thick and solid on the back where it would be up against the house and never seen. Once the channels are dry, we can cut the cords and install them in the channel. With the paracord pre-shrunk and dried, we can now go ahead and measure out the lengths. And I'm going to mark on my table the length of the cord so I don't have to keep measuring it. So on my workbench, I have a piece of tape. Put the other one down here. And then take a lighter and singe the end of it. You don't need to burn it, just kind of singe it quickly. We'll measure from here to here. So if you take the knot and you were to just make a normal knot, and pull it from both ends, you've got all that left over. That's gonna be a problem. So what I'm gonna do instead is tie that same knot, but leave it really loose, then hold on to the one end and just kind of push it with the other hand so that the knot all occurs right there by the end of the, the cord, like that. And just to keep things clean, I'm gonna cut off that little white bit. And there we go. There's our finished cord. And we'll do this 13 times for this window. 
So that's why this tape comes in really handy. Okay, sometimes when you have a stubborn one like this where the white won't go away, you kind of pull on one end of it, pull it out and just cut off half an inch or so of the white and grab it from this end and pull it through your fingers. And there we go. The white is tucked up in there and we'll have a nice clean end on this. As you can see, once you've tied a few of these, you're going to get pretty fast at it. Now with all our cords prepared, we can go ahead and put them in the channel, which probably doesn't require a lot of explanation. This is such a simple job and it makes such a big difference for the birds. There's nothing I hate worse than finding dead birds out by my window. It's really depressing. And there we go. This one is ready to mount. Finally, I used a couple of screws to mount these to my wood window frames. And that's all there is to it. These great looking bird savers help keep our birds alive and happy. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel to grow.